Mary. How are different kinds of bees created? Queen bees have a specialized reproductive system which lets them make some choices in the sort of eggs that are laid, diploid or haploid. But some final choices are also made by the worker bees who feed the emerging larvae, worker jelly or queen jelly. On a sunny day, drones from various hives will gather and hover around a specific location about 60 to 70 feet high in the sky. The queen will arrive and mate with 15 to 25 different drones. The goal of so much interaction is to minimize the amount of mates from her own hive. Hopefully, 14 of 15 mates will be from the other hives. Another goal of this mating session is to gather a large quantity of sperm. Queen bees have a spermatheca on their side, where they store thousands of sperm for later use. She will go on to lay about 2,000 eggs in spring and summer. The queen decides whether or not to release sperm from the spermatheca organ, where she releases an oocyte from her own ovaries. In honeybees, sex is determined by the fertilization or non-fertilization of eggs, rather than the presence of sex chromosomes. If no sperm is released, the unfertilized egg will become a male, or drone. This is called a haploid egg, because it only has one set of chromosomes. If sperm is introduced, the fertilized egg will become a female. This is a diploid egg, because it has two sets of chromosomes. A diploid egg can go on to become either a worker bee or a queen, depending on what it is fed. A queen doesn't feed her own offspring. She just lays eggs. Workers handle all the feeding in the hive, including feeding the queen. Each worker bee has glands in their head, which can produce two kinds of creamy white food, or jelly. Worker jelly will turn a diploid egg larvae into a worker bee, while the thicker and denser queen jelly, which is rich in sugar, would turn that same larvae into a queen bee. A queen larvae will consume 15 to 20 times more jelly than the other larvae. The worker bee makes this decision to create queens when their hive has too many workers and they need to swarm to a new hive with the old queen. It takes about 21 days for an egg to grow into a full bee. The egg will hatch about three days after being laid. At this point, the outer layer basically melts off and becomes food. For five days, the emergent larvae will grow and feed. Workers will check the larvae every 15 minutes to see if they need more food. The larvae tends to eat in spurts, so the worker will produce an excess of jelly directly onto their head, close to their mouth. Then the chamber will be capped and the larvae becomes a pupae for the remaining 13 days. Eggs are laid in the center of the chamber and point straight out, away from the chamber floor. The larvae's digestive system is simpler than the final bee, basically consisting of just a mouth, digestive tract, or stomach, and rectum. Two small structures in the head, the corpa alata, act as a primitive brain, receiving impulses from receptors along stretched portions of the gut, and respond by sending out juvenile hormones into the bloodstream, which will cause growth. Queen-specific hormones may also be released in a developing queen larvae, but the nature of hormone release and gene development is beyond the scope of this class. In a fully developed bee, the internal organs will look more like this, with a nervous system running along the bottom, a more complicated digestive system directly above, and the rest filled mostly with blood vessels.